Hi everyone. Today you're welcome to this live and I want to share with you my experience on how to find artistic style and creative voice. And also I will be very happy to answer all your questions. I have a bunch of them here and everything about creative voice, about finding it. Thank you for joining. And also you're very welcome to type your questions. I will answer everything. Um, my name is Paulina Osho and I'm a pattern designer and artist. Here are some of my patterns. And uh, before that, I was uh, working as a graphic designer and then I switched to art. And today in this life, it will be everything about uh, artistic style and creative voice. Really happy to see you here. You sent me many questions and many of them were about um, your doubts uh, you have and uh, blocks on your way of finding your creative voice. The most common is um, when we think that our art is not good enough. If you can relate, um, oh, you're currently painting there. That's very nice. Uh, if you can relate to anything I share today, uh, please uh, share in the chat. I will be very happy to communicate with you too. Hi, Anna. <laughs> happy to see you. Okay. So the one of the most popular is my art is not good enough. And with this uh, self judgment, it's really hard to create. I totally can understand. And this is the thing that uh, when we decide that uh, we want to find our own, own artistic style, we have to, first of all, be very kind to ourselves because we have to experiment a lot and try new things. And it's really impossible, uh, impossible to create something perfect from the scratch. Yeah, see, I relate to that, never feel uh, what I do is good enough. Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> but you know, art is about experimentation. And I think that every creative area artist will agree with me that we have to experiment, we have to give us um, permission to create something not perfect <laughs> because otherwise it's impossible when i started to my journey and yeah hi uh, when i started my journey and tried to find my artistic style i was sure that i can draw anything really well because before that i was working a lot on computer and created um, some uh, visual identities for brands and companies and it's uh, it really differs from arts like that <laughs> but anyway I take a sketchbook and uh, it was um, it, I was overwhelmed actually I was afraid to spoil it because uh, I'm a big fan of uh, everything like sketchbooks new pens new pencils <laughs> and I have uh, many sketchbooks uh, on my I had them on my shelf and all they were new brand and brand new sketchbooks and they were like a treasure for me and it sounds silly but it was hard just to start to draw with in them because I didn't know what exactly I want to draw I was sure that uh, it will be not good enough also but anyway um, I started I just started to experiment with different art materials and um, and I can say that I loved it. <laughs> anyway, for the first uh, several tries, uh, these uh, sketches uh, were not good enough, as uh, many of you wrote uh, in, in the questions and in the comments. And it's okay. I just uh, tried to continue and to do something else. And uh, yeah, I see that uh, some of you can totally relate to that. So uh, my recommendation, my tip is to create a um, if you struggle with the same thing maybe it's a nice idea to decide for yourself okay this sketchbook will be for not beautiful art this sketch be this sketchbook will be for some things for experiments you can even name it like unperfect sketchbook or sketchbook for my scribbles yeah, it's not silly. I feel like that with new sketch uh, with these new sketchbooks, I feel pressure of making something nice. Yeah, new sketchbook has this power of ours, but only in the beginning. I think after you feel one and another and another sketchbook, then you you actually feel pleasure of opening a new sketchbook and starting something there. But at the beginning of our artistic journey, 
many of us uh, meet the same kind of block. So um, if you have something like this, um, give it a name and uh, permission for yourself that it is your field for experimentation. It's not the sketchbook. Uh, the sketchbook is not the main here. You are, you are an artist, you are a creative, and you can make everything you want there. And uh, also start what helps me and other of my students I see to start with smaller format. Um, yeah, I think many of you already saw that I have these uh, sketchbooks and I did these patterns, uh, really small size. And it helps also because uh, it doesn't take so much time. And uh, so there is less pressure of finishing the big uh, spread in the sketchbook. Because you create something small, you can do it in 20, 50 minutes, 60 minutes, I don't know. And uh, it, it's releasing also. The next thing, if you have any questions about the, this, uh, please, you're very welcome to write it. Another thing that I see that for many artists, uh, for many creatives, they have doubts because they like so many things, so many styles, so many other artists' artworks that they might feel like, oh, I love everything, I want to create everything, I don't know how and where to start because I want to do everything. And I think it's okay, actually, it's okay to love many colors, it's okay to love many styles, and it's uh, totally very helpful to experiment with all this. But if you want to achieve some goals in one particular artistic style, of course, it's better to, to choose one direction, uh, to choose one style, to choose um, what's, what speaks to you, what you're passionate about. And to, to, the, to do this, uh, I think it's a good idea to collect everything you like in maybe several mood boards, depending on the direction of the style, and then analyze and listen to your heart what you like more, maybe to make some notes, to reflect what exactly do I like, like about this artist, what exactly do I like about these floral patterns or portraits, and what is more important for me at the moment, now, where I want to invest my energy and time in the in this year, for example, because our artistic style is not something uh, super stable, consistent. It, it develops with ourselves the same as we, as personalities, we change with uh, time. Uh, we are not the same as we were five or 10 years ago. It's, it, it's wonderful, <laughs> actually. And we can do the same with our styles. So if today you decide to um, draw only, only people portraits, you shouldn't be afraid that you have to stuck with these portraits for the whole life. Of course, you can change it, or you can change maybe the way you draw these portraits, or even the subject, and one day you decide, okay, um, portraits is great, but I'm more interested in people, in uh, to draw people in the, inter in the big interiors, I don't know, anything. And it's okay to develop it, to change it a little bit, to develop. It will, actually, it will go very, go, uh, will go very naturally with you as an artist, your artistic style. And I think the trick is that at the point where you see many styles and don't know what, what to choose, you do not choose anything, actually. You just uh, can try for, you know, this and this and this and that. And in fact, you don't move anywhere. And if you decide, as I <laughs> talked a few minutes ago, uh, to choose one direction for this year, for example, and focus all your attention on botanical patterns, for example, then uh, this year you will move much forward in this direction. And then you can change uh, also, make some changes to artistic style, but you achieve um, more results in um, patterns or in something you choose, then, then on the other hand, you can just 
uh, stay from year to year just uh, wondering what to choose w what to choose i didn't know <laughs> just something just what you uh, listen to your heart and uh, reflect and analyze your mood boards and choose something for the this year for example so by the way it's interesting to know uh, how many of you here who is online have the same uh, thoughts that oh so many styles and i don't know what to choose where, where to go And the next uh, thing that was also pretty popular, ah, how not to copy. Yeah, uh, another thing is uh, some creative, many creatives um, afraid of copying other artists when they don't have their own distinctive artistic style. They're afraid of copying by accident, accidentally copying some, some other style. And uh, with this fear, with this block, um, it's hard to work practically. I think it's more about mental analysis. You, I'm, I'm sure you know that uh, if you are not coping on purpose and if you are just drawing something, it might be influenced by what you have seen. Um, because uh, everything we create, it's not new. I mean that... Uh, you can find in the world many, many artworks, many styles. And when you draw something, it's like a combination of what you have seen before. And it, it's not only artworks. You have seen a lot of movies, a lot of uh, magazines, a lot of uh, prints on um, clothes, clothes. And all these, uh, a lot of flowers, nature, and all this uh, affects you and influence on you and... Uh, you also have your own experience with all this and impression and emotions and then you express all this experience uh, in colors and lines and you have and you create your own picture so it consists like a puzzle of million of impressions you have in in your life so and it's not copying i, I think <laughs> you agree with me that uh, it's not copying you're just um, reflect, express what you saw, uh, what you have in your life. So on the other hand, uh, copying, uh, if you take the illustration, I don't know what, I have a book here, yeah? If I take it, put it and start to draw, looking at this consistently, okay, of course it will be copying of the art style. And I'm sure creatives who wrote me questions about uh, questions that they're afraid of copying didn't ma mean that, that uh, it's obvious copying. But they, for some reason, afraid that uh, they have by uh, accidentally um, have some picture in their hand and uh, draw it. I don't know. Actually, if you can do this, uh, you have a superpower of <laughs> rendering pictures. Remember um, pictures that you have seen once and then render it on paper. Actually, it's pr pretty, it's not easy. I, because uh, if I look in the book and then after a few days I, I tried to copy it, it, for me it will be impossible. I don't have this uh, super memory. Uh, so, uh, again, I... I'm sure that um, it, uh, if you're afraid of copying, just <laughs> do not copy. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know how to, how other, uh, to explain this. So um, with this uh, block, uh, with this fear of copying other artists, uh, only thing you should do is not uh, copying directly, but uh, being inspired, being influenced, but something is something that we all can't avoid. As I already said, we all have um, our experience uh, and see oh i lost the one comment there i've always felt like a flower to have different styles ah, yeah, it was about different styles okay so we talked about uh fear of not being good enough comparing with other artists uh, and about um when we can choose from different styles and the last one was about copying so these ones are the most popular were the most popular questions about how to find the uh, artistic style. If you have any more, you can you're welcome to write in the comments. 
And uh, I would also like to give you some practical tips uh, that I hope can help you if you are looking for how to discover your artistic style. And they're actually they're very simple and I'm sure you know them, but uh, there is the different difference between knowing them and doing them. <laughs> so and they're a little bit boring, actually. First of all, you have uh, I think, um, in my opinion, you have to schedule your time because uh, if you have your day job, with the, which is not correct, uh, connected with art and other day duties, um, you might think about creating art, but uh, you have to schedule your time to create art and create it daily or maybe two, day, two days a week. The thing is, it should be consistent, not spontaneously once or two um, days uh, in two months, because it's also good, <laughs> but it's, uh, it will be really hard to develop your own artistic style without consistent practice. Uh, so uh, if you can take your planner or, or schedule and put their time, maybe in the morning, in the evening when you have it, uh, it can be actually 15, 30 minutes a day, but it's, it's much better. It's uh, fantastic comparing for some spontaneous moments during the months. So first schedule the time uh, for creativity. And uh, for me also works when I have a place where to create. It can be even a dinner table. I, st I started with a dinner table, but I had a sketchbook and markers. They were uh, on the shelf and I always knew that I, it will take me only a few seconds to grab them and to start to create. Um, I mean that um, when you don't have your space for, for, cre for creating art and you, you have to First, spend time to remember where, this, where is my sketchbook, where, am I, where are my markers, where is the paint, where is everything, and then, oh, and I have to clean the table first and then to create. It, it all will take your time and energy and it can stop you from just uh, starting then. Then some idea will pop uh, pops up, oh, I have to do something, I have to... I don't know, go to the grocery or something. And then you will just switch and lose this moment. So it's super simple, but it's better to prepare the place for your creativity so it will be very welcoming and you know that you will sit uh, or stand, I don't know, <laughs> and start creating just right now, just in the moment. That it was the second one and the third one, um, there are, many ma there are many tips, but I I'm thinking about the main ones uh, that uh, also helped me a lot. So regular practice, scheduling kit, having a uh, place and materials prepared for practice and uh, experiment experiments. Yeah, experiments and practice. Don't uh, make borders for your creat creativity if you're searching for creative uh, voice and artistic, artistic style, you need uh, a lot of freedom. You need mm, no judgment from yourself. So please ask your inner critic uh, to, <laughs> to sit, sit quietly while you create, because this time is precious. It's uh, your time, your time for creativity, and uh, it should be full of freedom of creation without no judgment and try to experiment with different uh, media, with different techniques and see, uh, just listen to yourself what you like more and continue to practice and practice. And the last one, maybe I would suggest to find a support. Um, maybe it can be a supportive art community or a friend or family. It depends on what um, people you have around. If if for any reason your family is not so supportive uh, and maybe a little bit judging <laughs> and say that mm, that you are doing some uh, childish uh, scribbles, then ask them kindly not to comment uh, that, and not to just not to comment your art because it can be very painful, especially in the beginning if you only start to create or maybe you're still not confident in what you're creating. Uh, these comments, uh, they can be not so 
rude. I mean, that can be normal. Just oh, I don't, I don't know. It's okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> but you will feel it. You will see it, and it can be very um, harmful for you. So, if you're very sensitive to comments and uh, from your family, or then um, I uh, suggest asking them not to. Uh, give random comments on your art because uh, explain them that uh, you know I, I feel not confident in this and I would appreciate a lot if you can only support me or not uh, commenting my art at the beginning but also try to find a supportive community here on Instagram here are many wonderful artists who like to, to um, uh, support um, who, who like to I don't know uh, who, who are really very kind and supportive and I also I uh, subscribe uh, I'm following uh, so many of my students and I'm always so happy to see their artworks in my feed and I put this uh, emoji and hearts every day for, for <laughs> every hour, I don't know. I'm, re I'm really, uh, I feel connection with them and very I'm very inspired by their art and I'm so happy that I can give them a comment or something to support their art. So also if you... Uh, subscribe to other artists uh, I think it's uh, a nice practice to support each other because uh, most of us uh, creatives and artists are very sensitive and we really well we really value their um, support and comments because we share our art and it's really important to you know, to receive some feedback some energy like putting our energy and uh, art out there in the world and Usually it's like an exchange of energy. There was a comment and I will answer it. Uh, may I ask uh, what the size of the notebook you use? Um, do you mean this, uh, this, these sketchbooks, the small ones? Mm, if these ones? Yeah, here's the thing. I've already shared it on Instagram, uh, but I will repeat because maybe some of you didn't hear that. Uh, all these uh, patterns are drawn in a molly skin sketchbook with uh, the smallest size. I don't remember exactly what it is. Here's, you see, it's super small, something like, I don't know, six centimeters or... Ah, I have a ruler. I will measure it now. Okay. So, <clears throat> it's... It's almost six and a half uh, centimeters in inches. It I don't know. I have only centimeters. So, ah, no, I have inches also. Two uh, no, two and a half. <laughs> sorry, two and a half, two and a, two point six inches, uh, and four, four and point two inches, and in centimeters it's six and a half centimeters and almost 11, 10, 11 centimeters. So it's very small, but the thing is that this sketchbook are out of stock. They are not, I mean, they are not produced anymore. And when I filmed my course on Domestica about how to draw these patterns in a sketchbook, they were um, in stock. But then, I don't know, many, all, maybe all the students just <laughs> bought all these sketchbooks, but you now you can find it anywhere. Um, I only heard that there is one store where it's still, but anyway, I can also buy it. But then I found this one. So this is Molly Skin and this is uh, Leuchtturm 1917. They are al almost the same size, you see, and they have almost the same paper, but they now also out of stock. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so my suggestion, uh, I don't have it here, but my suggestion is to buy, uh, if you want the same, more or less the same um, size, Art Talents Creations. Yes, Art Talents Creations, Creation, Art Talents Creation Notebook. It's a little bit bigger, but it's a little bit, and, it, uh, and it's uh, a little more thick. Um, and the paper also is not so thin and is in these sketchbooks, but they are also small. I think I already shared somewhere in the art materials. Maybe I will uh, share it one more time in the stories, this list of art materials again. 
So I think it's, it's everything that I wanted to share today about how, ah, no, <laughs> the most important thing. Yeah. Uh, if you want to find your artistic style and listen to a creative voice with me, I'm really very welcome you to my course, which starts on April 29th and uh, uh, till Friday, uh, today and tomorrow, uh, there is an early bird uh, discount, a 20% discount to this course, which is pretty huge. And uh, if you want to develop your own artistic unique artistic style with me with my guidance uh, and support and with uh, fellow creatives uh, who are also very kind and supportive uh, it's also an amazing ex experience to work on this course it's my favorite one and i put my soul into it and i'm really very passionate about it so if you would like to join it uh, please find the link in my bio there is a pre-registration form and you will receive an email from me uh, with 20% discount. Uh, or I can say it, this discount for you now, in, if you can write it, it's uh, bird20, B-I-R-D-20, like early bird, just a bird20. And uh, if you type it on their checkout on the website of the course, it's also, also I think it's also in my bio, then you will get 20% discount on this course. But uh, if you want to use it, please uh, hurry, hurry a little bit because it valid uh, till the end of the Friday in their Europe. So if you live on the other end of the world, uh, I, I'm not sure from which hour <laughs> it works. Yeah, we are very welcome. So, and if you have any questions uh, about uh, the format of the course or how on or anything, you are also welcome to contact me, and I will answer. You can ask me now, also. But I think that uh, I shared with you everything I, would, I wanted today, and uh, it was a pleasure for me. Uh, also, maybe some of you already watched my <laughs> previous life where I was super nervous. I'm happy to say that today I was a little bit much less uh, nervous than that time and I hope I managed it better and the next time will be even more better. So uh, write me anything and I will try to answer and thank you, thank you very much. I will try to save this, uh, this slide if you missed the beginning where I shared practical tips on how to find your artistic style and you can watch it later. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Bye.